Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and um, this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, we'll have a look at the GFS ensembles and the UK Met Office run as well. Now over the last few days we've been looking at the possibility of it going really quite cold for the last half of November and we are still seeing that in the models this evening. We are potentially going for a very cold and even wintry end to November, something we haven't actually seen for many years. Now at this stage the detail um, is a little bit mixed, but the general pattern is going to be Greenland blocking, and we are going to be seeing generally northerly to northeasterly airflows, which could bring us some very cold weather. So do remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure to like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you do run through the latest GFS, you can see at the moment we generally have westerly winds and that's the pattern over the, this week. Until this weekend, we do finally see something turning a little bit colder. Now you can see a lot of sort of westerly winds bringing in generally milder air in the south, maybe a little bit colder in the north. We do see some of these lows moving through. Generally quite dry in the south, but we do have a lot of trapped cloud and some drizzly conditions around as well, like we've seen today. However, as we head towards the weekend, it's this high pressure coming out of the North Atlantic, and it's going to park itself just to our north and our west. And initially, we're going to be pulling in a cool, if not even cold, northerly wind, and there could be few wintry showers here and there across the north and east coast but nothing too major quite cold daytime temperatures mid to high single digits um and potentially quite cold overnight getting below freezing the real interest happens in around a week's time when this high pressure you can see at mid atlantic it's reinforced by another high pressure system that develops towards greenland we see retrogression where the high pressure moves from east to west and you can see low pressure plunging out of the north now one thing that could happen that we are seeing a little bit on some of the models as we've seen the gm and the eastern gf in a minute is if this low pressure does plunge a bit too far west we see that initially on this gfs run you can see the coldest day actually goes out into the middle of the atlantic not quite not quite towards the uk but because this greenland block is sustained we see multiple northerly plunges and by the end of the run we're all in a very cold air mass and right towards the end of the run very very cold indeed and we still have this high in the north atlantic keeping us very very cold uh, straight um, with a northerly airflow right from the arctic dew points would be very low we would be seeing widespread snow to lower levels um, even in the south however initially as we saw it is going to start off as a mixed bag there is going to be some marginal events if we see a similar scenario to this where that cold air is pushing in from the north but it's not quite getting it cold enough for it to snow at all elevation levels and in all regions of the UK. So it could be quite a messy picture initially towards the end of November, but if we did see it sustain like this, it would very quickly turn completely wintry for all. So we do have a look at the GFS, have a look at the precipitation types. Now this is just hints, these are indicators of what we would see with that sort of scenario. It's not going, it is, this is not exactly what's going to happen, just general hints. You can see, First hints of any potential snowfall uh, is this weekend, potentially in the north, across uh, higher ground, but elsewhere, nothing too major. Then towards the middle of the week, when we start to see the initial northerly flow move in, initially rain, maybe snow over higher ground, and in the south, still quite a bit of rain around. You can see, though, readily turning to snow over higher ground, especially in northern England, Scotland, before you can see around day 10, the coldest air finally sinks southwards. Still rain or a mix in the south before, as we see by the end of the run, things starting to turn completely to snow for all areas um, inland, um, even to lower levels. You can see snow widely. And that isn't as accurate as you can see. There's just a lot of white uh, sort of blobs everywhere, um, but it's all symbolic of the potential for heavy snow showers or even um, frontal snow at times. And you can see under a low pressure, it's going to be very unsettled, which means potentially quite a few snow showers around. If we do have a look at temperatures, we'll just run it out sort of to day 10. You can see in the north, around freezing or one degree in around 10 days' time, in the south, seven or eight degrees. So still quite cold in the south but not really cold yet. We move on, maybe four or five degrees in the south, freezing in the north, but as we're towards sort of Sunday the 28th, four or five degrees below freezing in the north. And then by the Monday, you can see 
four or five once again and below freezing in the north getting widely below freezing at night as well and of course these temperatures are subject to change um, sort of microclimates can change this and exact air masses can change it as well but you can see by sort of two weeks time now this is very inaccurate of course because it's two weeks time um, but if we did have that scenario you would see hardly getting above freezing anywhere really bitterly cold to getting down to double de negative double digits overnight bitterly cold conditions and by the first few days of december we could be seeing ice days where we see temperatures not getting above freezing for many areas so very interesting seeing what's happening on this gfs run now if we have a look at the gm which is slightly contrasted and you'll see what happens with this you can see westerly winds and then we see that brief northerly wind before the high pressure reinforce itself up towards Greenland, but we see this cutoff low develop in the middle of that. Nothing we saw at all in um, the GFS run. And what this does actually brings up southerly winds. Very bizarre run from the GM. Now, this is the midnight run. We haven't got the midday run completely through yet, but we've got out to 144 hours. And you can see 144 hours, it's poised to go very cold. So maybe that was a bit of an outlier run from the GM run there. Um, because as we see with the East MDF and the ensembles in a minute, they mostly are going very, very cold. If we have a look at the East MDF, see how that does compare. Again, westerly winds in the next few days, northerly wind before the high pressure reinforces itself to the north. And at day 10, we see something similar to what we initially saw with the GFS, with the coldest areas coming down a little bit further to our west. And it's going to mean it's going to be very marginal in terms of snow across the UK, even some warmer air into Europe. But give that another day or two and that low will eventually clear and we will be going into that bitterly cold air mass, turning things a lot colder and potentially wintry as well for many. Now if we have a look at the uh, UK Met Office run as well, out to 168 hours, you can't see all the way out into its extended range um, as its data is not available, but we'll see good indications what it does show for beyond that northerly wind in weeks, um, in just under a week's time can see towards next uh, weekend northerly wind pushes in and then by 168 hours you can see the high pressure retrogressing towards greenland and northerly winds starting to plunge down from the north the bitterly cold air looks like it is ready to unleash itself on the uk giving it another day or two so very very interesting seeing what is happening with that um and all you snow lovers out there Fingers crossed we do see this stay within the model output over the next few days. Uh, it is still subject to change. Until it gets in sort of the seven-day time frame, we can't say for certain. But considering it's been pretty consistent now for a good few days, we're seeing it firm up within the ensembles, as we'll see in a minute. Um, it is looking very, very encouraging. Now, if we have a look at the GFS ensembles, about the time I'm recording this, the 12Z run hasn't fully come out, but you can see up to the next 11 days. Um, you can see generally over the next sort of five days, temperatures are going to be above average, quite warm in fact, around 19th, 20th of November, towards the end of this working week. Before the weekend, we see a big temperature drop down to around minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 degrees at 850 HPAA, and it stays that cold. Um, precipitation increasing with colder air mass, that means the potential for wintriness. Now you can see it is offset by mild ensemble members, most likely similar ones to what we saw with the GM and to a certain extent the ECWF pulling in a bit more of a southwesterly wind um, as a result of the low pressure being a bit further westward. So you can see there are still mild outliers, but the majority are going very cold, some going bitterly cold. And if we have a look at the 6Z run, you can see that is very, very consistent. You see the GFS operational run um, at the 6Z was an out milder outlier, especially in the middle to longer term, but out to 10 days out you can see the majority are getting down to minus 5 a and 50 hpa some going much colder than that um, so very interesting seeing that all the way to, out to the end of the run all are staying very cold another good indicator is have a look at the dew points which sim is symbolic of where the air mass is coming from because of course you can get a colder air mass a 50 hpa but if but if it's coming from like a westerly or northwesterly direction following a lot of the north atlantic the dew points aren't quite as cold, so towards the surface, it's not quite as cold of an air mass. But you can see the dew points are around freezing, so similar to a northerly or northeasterly airflow, cold enough for wintriness. That's an important factor with this as well. So if you do have a look at Glasgow, 
further north you can see again dew points around freezing or well below freezing potentially in seven to ten days time beyond that some going much milder others staying very cold some going down to minus 10 which is really brutally cold for an air mass if we also have a look at the new snow depth you can see snow that spikes are starting to appear but of course they're not going to be particularly accurate until it's sort of in the five day time frames because of course these ensembles do struggle um sort of pin up convection and showery outbreaks um in the longer term because they are lower resolution of course but if we do have a look at the 850 hpa uh temperature and precipitation you can see generally again mild over the next five days before the temperatures do crash return to around average but nothing really quite mild um yeah nothing really mild at all before it does go around away uh, and a majority are going down to minus five if not colder around the 25th 26th of november then we see a bit of a divergence some going milder some are going colder but the ones going milder um are only going back to sort of freezing at 850 hpa and that's possible um it's a, that's a possibility where we see a bit of a milder sector mixing in before we see another northerly plunge um which is what we saw on the gfs um 12z run so nothing um too amazing in the longer term but it is looking like we could be going for quite a cold end to november so remember minus 5 to 850 hpa in november it's a good four or five degrees below average if this was in January or February, you'd argue it's not that bitterly cold. But the end of November, this is really, really quite cold. Um, and it could even go colder than that um, near the time. If we have a look at the 12Z run, if you can see it actually has trended a bit colder um, as well. There are some brutally cold runs now appearing. You can see generally mild over the next five days. Then it drops down to and then returns to around average. And then you can see... The average of the ensembles is down to sort of minus five, minus six degrees at 850 HP now, being put up by some other outliers. But there are some brutally cold runs, as I said, getting down to maybe minus 15 degrees at 850 HPA, which would be plunging us into the freezer. Uh, and I mean, temperatures will be well below freezing um, day and night. Widespread snowfall as well. If we saw that can, sort of conditions with a northerly or northeasterly wind, a lot of convection streamers as well. If we saw that sort of air mass, truly exceptional because that's 20 degrees less um, than what we're going to be seeing towards the end of this working week. Truly exceptional. Uh, be very interesting to see um, if that continues or whether it does continue to trend colder over the next few days. So we finally have a look at the UK metals run just to see what we're going to see over the next five days, really. Cassie January showers have been pushing into the northwest with a weather front but it has sort of fizzled away still some drizzly patches around and some snow showers started to put into northern Scotland tonight beyond that we do see a continuation of showers in the west but nothing too crazy just some thicker cloud and a few drizzly showers then a weather front pushes into the north through Wednesday night to Thursday nothing too major again just really miserable conditions really but nothing too dangerous in terms of rainfall totals and then by Friday, again, showers in the north, but you can see that weather front starting to push southwards, and that's that cold air mass starting to push in. And if we could run this on another day or so, would expect us to start to see some snow showers starting to appear across Scotland more widely, and even down into England um, over some higher ground as well, and temperatures will be starting to really quite fall. Uh, if we have a look at the temperatures for the next five days, you can see... Today, temperatures around 10 or 11 degrees, so nothing too massively cold, but not really mild either. As we head um, overnight to tonight into tomorrow, temperatures around 0 degrees across Scotland, but holding quite steady in the south, as we have warmer air mass in the south, but we still have that cold air mass that's giving a few snow showers tonight in the north. Beyond that, to Wednesday, we are going to be seeing temperatures once again around 10 11 degrees, much colder in the north. But by Thursday, we're starting to see a milder air mass push in. So it's going to mean temperatures are widely around 12 to 14 degrees. So quite mild uh, above average as well. By Friday, temperatures started to cool down a little bit. Still 13 to 14 degrees in the south, but a little bit colder in the north. And by Saturday, temperatures once again, maybe 11 or 12 in the south, but much colder in the north. And you'd expect as we head through Sunday, 
into Monday. Those temperatures to really drop down to mid single digits, especially in the north. Maybe getting up to around 8 or 9 degrees in the south, but freezing overnight. And probably locally would be colder than that. So very interesting end of November is coming. Do make sure you stay tuned as it does look like there are going to be some changes with this. We could be seeing some very cold conditions. We could be seeing just generally colder conditions. But regardless of what happens, it does look like there is the real possibility now um, of seeing some wintriness towards the end of this month. Whether it's going to be over northern hills, Scotland um, and maybe northern England. Uh, exclusively or whether we do see widespread cold wintry conditions that is yet to be established because it all depends on exactly how cold the air mass does get a couple degrees at 83 hpa can make a big difference between seeing three or four degrees cold rain or zero or one degree um, and heavy snowfall so we'll have to see what happens make sure you stay tuned make sure you stay up to date with the met office warnings as well i do suspect there will be some snow and ice warnings coming up over the next few weeks as we have this potentially very cold end of November coming up. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.